Welcome back to my shop. Now that I've got all of my stock cut for the front dividers or blades, I need to sort of figure out how I'm going to accomplish all of the joinery to build the web frames. Now the web frames are basically the structure that fits between each drawer and supports the drawer that sits on top of it and also prevents the drawer that's um, sitting below it from racking when it's pulled out. So I'm going to show you the joinery technique that I'm going to use to accomplish that. I've gone ahead and created sort of a mock-up that mirrors how that step front will look and sort of demonstrates the joinery that I'm going to use. So the, the bottom, or I guess in this case, the top blade that's going to slide in, and this is where the, the drawer will actually slide right on top of this, is a sliding dovetail. And it's a sliding dovetail that's actually fit into a dado. So the dado is going to house the side of the web frame that holds the drawer bottom and top. And then the sliding dovetail will then slide in and fit flush. And that side piece that fits in the dado will have a mortise or will have a tenon that will fit into a mortise on the blade. Now in the front, that mortise and tenon joint will get glued together. In the back, that will be left floating and that will allow for any seasonal, seasonal expansion and contraction of the side piece, that tenon will just move in and out of that mortise and float freely. So after that's complete, then I'll have the bottom piece will fit in here and I'm ultimately going to do sliding dovetails that will go down into the joint and then I'll be able to glue this in place. So you'll have basically a locking set of dovetails. You'll have one that slides in this way, one that slides down this way, and then it'll be glued together. So even if the glue joint in the dovetails themselves were to fail, this wouldn't be able to move because you'd have two dovetails sliding at 90 degree angles to one another. So that's my plan and hopefully it will work. Now that I have my rabbits complete, my next step is going to be cutting the dados that will seat the sides of the web frame. That means each of those web frames, if you look at the piece in this orientation, the web frame is going to go directly on top of each step and that's where the drawer is going to sit. So in order to avoid any confusion when I actually cut the dados, I'm just going and marking exactly where each dado should be. That way I know that I'm not putting my dado in the wrong spot. And then to completely idiot proof the process, I'm just going to put some black X's right where that dado is so that there's no way I can put the dado in the wrong place. Now hopefully I didn't just jinx myself by saying that. If you've seen my media cabinet episode uh, a few projects back, this will look familiar to you. This is my um, basically my, my dadoing jig and it provides uh, a nice square reference surface and this thing is built so that it's easy to set up the exact right thickness you need and then it's just used with a, a router blade um, or a, a router with a, uh, a bushing insta installed in it that rides along this edge which is slightly rabbited out to accommodate for the thickness of that bushing. Because the sides are stepped on the front I'm going to have to register this T-square against the back of each piece. One thing I do need to be careful of is that as I cut this dado and my router is going to be going in this direction, it's going to be exiting at the front of the piece because I need to register the T-square on the back. And I really don't want that to blow out and to have any chipping. Uh, especially on the front. If I were able to do this in the other direction, which is what I would do if the front of this case were actually straight, I wouldn't have to worry about blowout in the back because it would be concealed inside the, the rabbit that's going to be holding the back of the piece in place. So what I'm going to do in this instance is use one of the um, pieces that I cut to actually measure out my steps in the first place and I've got a little bit of double stick tape right on the side. So I'm going to register it up against that step, making sure that it's flush with the face of the side. 
push it in place and then just take a clamp and make sure that it's nice and stuck on there because double stick tape is usually pressure sensitive. So I want to make sure that that's not going to move when my router blade exits the piece. So with my patented blowout prevention device installed at the end there, I just take my T-square and line it up with the marking gauge or the marking knife marks that I already made. And then I just clamp the square down. Now I've got my router fit with a base that will accept a standard uh, Porter cable bushing and I have a half inch bit in there. Now the, um, the data we're going to be cutting is going to end up being 5 eighths of an inch so it just needs to be smaller than the diameter of the bushing and it needs to be smaller than the final width of the dado for this to work. The trick now that I have the width set and I've got my um, dado jig set to cut that 5 8 inch um, is to set the depth of cut. Now you can see how far the bit is extended right now. That is the bit fully extended through the jig so that it's just resting on the surface of my stock piece. So I'm going to show you a trick how I can set the depth of cut when um, I can't reference it directly from the base of the router. So I start out and I'll just double check that the blade is set so that it's just touching the top of my stock and I'm going to lock the router. And then I'm just going to spin it around here and this is my Triton router and it's got the depth stop is this bar right here. This dado that I'm cutting really only needs to seat the sides of the web frame so it doesn't need to be very deep at all. I want it set to an eighth of an inch. So I've got an eighth inch setup block here. I'm just going to sneak that in there right on top of my depth set mechanism and then I'm going to lock it down. That way, when I'm in plunge operation, it'll be able to plunge exactly an eighth of an inch further down than where it is when it's seated right on the top of my stock. So now that I've got everything set up properly and I've got my jig attached, I've got my blowout prevention guide firmly attached, now it's just going to be a matter of running the router along this left-hand side of the jig coming out the back and then moving it up against the right side and coming back the other direction and then that'll cut my dado exactly the right width. And there I've got a nice dado. If I take my setup block, I can see that it's the right depth. And I've also got no blowout on the front because I used my fantastic blowout preventer. You can even see that had I not used the blowout preventer, this piece here, look at all this blowout. That would have been right on the front of the carcass and that's not something that you want to see. And then the final key is flipping the piece around. You can see the nice crisp dado and it didn't touch any of this step right here. That would be really bad if the dado cut into that. So I got it nice and flush. And then I've got my piece of test stock and I can see that that slides right into the dado. It's a nice fit. So in order to cut my sliding dovetails, there are a few things I need to take into account. 
Now I really can't use the, uh, the same kind of dado jig that I used before to cut the dovetails because it's just going to be one single pass through and I need to make sure I have the depth exactly set. In order to make the process a little bit easier cutting these sliding dovetails, I've taken a piece of quarter inch plywood and this plywood is basically the exact distance between the edge of my router plate and the edge of the blade. So that's going to be very useful for me to use in order to set up the fence that I need the router to ride on in order to cut these sliding dovetails. So in this case, I'm going to use um, this clamp and cut. And all I have to do to set this up is get that piece of plywood lined up exactly with the edge here. And that's gonna mean the bottom of my dovetail or the bottom of my, my dovetail socket in this case will be perfectly aligned with the edge of the dado. So now I have my fence clamped down and I know that the edge of that dovetail blade is going to just go along the edge of this step here. In order to set the depth, all I'm going to do is take one of the blades for a reference and then line it up with the front and I'm just going to make a little mark inside that dado so that I'm not getting any ink on anything. And I'm using black pen um, and this doesn't have to be precise because it's going to be hidden by the, uh, the web frame when it slides in but it needs to be reasonably accurate. So I need something that's visible and relatively accurate and a Sharpie makes a lot of sense in that case. Now the last thing before I start cutting, it's gonna be really important because this is the very front of my piece that I want a really nice crisp dovetail socket there. So I've got another piece of double stick tape on a piece of scrap. So I'm going to snug that right up against it and just like I did before, I'm going to adhere that on there and that'll prevent any blowout when that dovetail bit goes in. Now I'm ready to cut that dovetail socket. The only important thing to remember here is that I need to keep the edge of my router, uh, router base plate flush up against this fence. So I want to apply a little bit of pressure to the right, not so much that this thing's going to move, but enough so that I don't accidentally wander to the left because there's nothing preventing my router from moving to the left. So I'm just going to give a little bit of pressure to the right through this cut. And then I'm going to be looking down through the top so I know where that black line is so I know where to stop my cut. and I completely stop the router and then pull it back out. That makes sure I don't accidentally enlarge that channel by pulling it out before the blade stops spinning. Now if I just pop off the clamp, twist off that sacrificial front piece, peel off the remaining double stick tape, I've got my channel all cut. Cleaning out these sockets is actually a pretty easy exercise, believe it or not. All I have to do is kind of set my end point, and I'm fairly generous where I set the end point, I'm using a half inch chisel here, a um, little bit carefully, just kind of scribing that end point line, and then I just use my eighth inch chisel um, and just sort of run it along the inside of that dovetail wall or that socket wall and let that wall kind of be my guide for driving that in. And then I can just go back in at an angle here and clear out that waste. And this is a pretty easy process, especially given how soft butternut is.
And then I just give it one more clean out, running the chisel along the bottom, removing any last bits of waste. And there you have it, squared out socket. Now, since my dovetails aren't perfectly centered inside the dados, um, my dovetail, or at least the, uh, the dovetail sockets aren't perfectly centered, so this dovetail that I'm cutting here needs to be a little bit off center too. So while I always make sure that first face is completely flush, the second one is going to kick back just a little bit. And then I'll also fine tune that. So it's really an exercise of getting um, both the width correct as well as the depth. But once I get that depth nailed down, it'll be pretty easy to start repeating these cuts. So I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but that dovetail is slightly off center. Now I've got the final fit down. I've got my sockets squared. And now these sliding dovetails slide right in. Get a nice flush fit there. So I'm pretty happy with the results. Next, I need to move on to doing the lower blades.